called an introduction to scientific investigation. It's very simple. This is just as a startup point for you guys to start in the chemistry lab. And for that, we will just study the precision and uncertainty on the uh, glasswares that you use in a chemistry lab. Okay? So, today's example, we will uh, measure the density of water. Okay? And as you know, to, to measure the density, we need to measure the mass and the volume because density is equal to mass over volume. Now, how precise our measurements will be is related to the precision of the equipment or the glassware that we are using. Okay? In terms of mass, we will be using an anal analytical balance Okay, so this gives us four decimal places, which means it's very good precision at a certain point. However now, how can we measure the volume? To measure the volume, in a chemistry lab, you can use many different glasswares, such as beaker, that's how it looks, beaker, a graduated cylinder, and then we have other glasswares like Erlenmeyer, and burette. Okay? So, what we will be doing, we will be measuring certain volume in this speaker. Say, for example, 5, or you will measure in this speaker, you can measure 10 milliliter. So, 10 milliliter, it's like this mark here. So, you will be filling water to the 10 milliliter mark. Okay? And then you will measure the mass of this 10 milliliter. So if I now take water and fill until the 10 milliliter mark. So I know that I have 10 milliliter of water. How do I know the, the, the mass of this? To know the mass, I can simply take the beaker and measure the mass of the water, right? But the number I will read on the scale, it's going to give me the mass of water plus the mass of the beaker. So what do I need in this case? I need to subtract, I need the mass of the beaker empty. Right? So that's why before you guys fill your beaker with water, you have to measure its mass empty. And the same thing you do with the graduated cylinder, okay? So, what you will need to do today is that you measure the mass of the beaker empty, the mass of the cylinder empty, okay? And then, you can measure the mass of the water that you, f you will fill in. Uh, you will be measuring the density of water, but to make sure that I'm getting accurate results and precise results, I need to repeat my measurements several times, right? You remember the accuracy and precision. So, to make sure that my measurements are precise and accurate, okay? Now, for accuracy, I know the density of water has to be around 1 gram per milliliter. This is for accuracy. Now, for precision, I need to repeat my measurements at least the three times to see if I'm getting, in the three cases, values equal to one, milli, one gram per milliliter, right? So this will tell me whether my results are precise or not. For that, you will be measuring the density taken five milliliter of water, 15 milliliter of water, 20 milliliter of water. And every time, you measure the mass, and you measure the density, and you will see the results. So now, we have explained that by looking at the graduation on the glassware, you can tell which glassware is more precise than which, right? And we said that the glassware that will give you more precise measurement is the one that has a smaller 
unit. You have these two passwords. I will let it to you guys to judge which one you think this is going to give you more precise measurements. Okay? As a hypothesis for your experiment, you can say, I think that the beaker will be more precise than the graduated cylinder. This is an hypothesis, right? Then in the conclusion you say, no. For example, no. Or you can say, yes. My, or my hypothesis is correct. The beaker is more precise than the graduated cylinder. Or you can say, no. My hypothesis was wrong, okay? The graduated cylinder is more precise than the beaker. So you do not need, it's not required that you guess the correct hypothesis, right? This is just a hypothesis. After your experiment, you can say whether your hypothesis was correct or not. Now, in your lab manual, guys, you have these two tables where you will be filling your measurements, your data. So you can see that you have to measure the volume of water, the mass of graduated cylinder plus water, mass of empty graduated cylinder, and then you can subtract to get the mass of water and the density of water. In a similar way, you do the same for the beaker, and then later on for the lab report, you can answer a series of questions. Okay? So now that you have finished your experiment, you should have noticed which glassware it's easier to fill a precise uh, amount with it, right? Based on the graduation of the uh, glassware. Now the gla graduation of the glassware should give you a lot of information. So an important information from the graduation of the glassware is how many decimal places you will include in your measurement. For example, when you measure 5 milliliter, are you going to say the number is, the answer or the result is 5, 5.0, 5.00? How do you get this? You get it from the uncertainty of the device, based on the uncertainty. How many decimal points you have in the uncertainty, you can include in your uh, volume measure. Now for the mass measurements, the way you recorded it, you leave it just the way it is. For the volume, that's going to be based on the uncertainty. Now we know that the uncertainty, it's different between the beaker and the graduated cylinder. So the way you measured your volume with the beaker and graduated cylinder is going to be different. Now one of the things that you need to do in your lab report to compare the results between the graduated cylinder and the beaker, you have to plot the graph. Okay? That's all explained in your lab uh, manual.